This week, migrants clash with cops on Randall's Island, plus a spike in subway crimes across the city, and... It seems like it's happening more and more. A brazen armed robbery in broad daylight is caught on camera. Right now, Fox 5's Crime in the City. Here are the crimes across the five boroughs. We begin in Soho, where a grisly murder took place at the Soho 54 Hotel. The man accused of that murder has been apprehended in Arizona. However, officials in that state are refusing to extradite the suspect, claiming that Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg cannot be trusted. We will not be agreeing to extradition. I've instructed my extradition attorneys not to agree to that. A battle of political wills brewing between Arizona and New York with the fate of a murder suspect at stake. The Republican prosecutor in Maricopa County announcing she won't be sending back New York City murder suspect Rod Almansori. The bold move defying the wishes of Manhattan's Democrat District Attorney Alvin Bragg. Having observed uh, the treatment of violent criminals in the New York area, by the Manhattan DA there, Alvin Bragg. I think it's safer to keep him here and keep him in custody so that he cannot be out doing this to individuals. Alman Sori is accused of beating to death Denise Olias Arancibia with an iron inside the Soho 54 hotel room in Lower Manhattan two weeks ago. Police say she was working as an escort. Security video capturing Alman Sori after the murder wearing her leggings. Almansori was arrested Sunday in a stolen car in Arizona. Police there say he's wanted for attacking a female McDonald's worker and carjacking another woman. He's also linked to similar violent crimes in Florida and Texas. When there's a felony, such as a, a homicide, a murder, one state with probable cause to arrest a fugitive and the paperwork is in order and that person is the one who's identified in that arrest warrant needs to be extradited back to the other state. Jeremy Salon, now a criminal defense lawyer, once worked as a prosecutor in the Manhattan District Attorney's Office. The person who challenges that is not the state because they don't approve of how a prosecutor handles things. I mean, that, that's patently offensive and really off base. We now go to Randall's Island, where video of a physical confrontation between NYPD officers and migrants is causing outrage again, as the city continues to struggle with the crisis. This was a scene last Thursday at around 11 a.m. According to the NYPD, they responded to a 911 call about a man causing a disturbance at the migrant shelter on Randall's Island. Police say they saw the migrants getting in a verbal dispute with security, so they removed him from the shelter. But not before the other migrants in the shelter started throwing things at the officers. Anytime you have uh, 3,000 people who are placed in an environment that they cannot work, uh, they have to sit around all day, uh, you know, things like this have the potential to happen. Mayor Eric Adams says around 3,000 people live at that shelter. It's also not the first time police have had to respond to a situation there. Last month, a 24-year-old migrant was stabbed to death in the cafeteria tent. Cameras have already been installed at the Randalls Island site, but the Adams administration is still reviewing installing metal detectors there as well. There's a full review happening right now of the security at all of our facilities, and particularly Randalls. So if there's anything else to report out, we will certainly get back to you. Adams on Tuesday also responded to questions about the incident that occurred at Times Square. According to police, they asked a group of migrants acting disorderly to disperse. And when one man refused, they attempted to place him under arrest, which is when a group of around a dozen migrants ganged up on the officers, kicking them repeatedly. However, according to the body cam footage, the man arrested, Yohenry Brito, was walking away slowly when in Spanish he called one of the officers an ugly Betty. That's when the officer grabs Brito, moves him to the wall of a building, and attempts to place him under arrest. Adam says he has not watched the whole video, but says regardless, no one can attack police officers like this group did. Under no circumstances should we ever give the uh, belief to anyone, migrant or non-migrant, that you have the authorization to try to grab a police officer's gun, uh, to kick an officer, to fight an officer. Uh, we should never do that. Down in the meatpacking district, three armed suspects were caught on daytime surveillance video robbing a New York City Gucci store of $51,000 worth of items 
and pointing a gun at customers. The sign outside the door at the Gucci store in the meatpacking district says temporarily closed. Here's the reason why. Surveillance video shows two men and a woman whom police say burst into the store on West 14th Street just after 12 noon Monday. Authorities say the trio were masked armed and ordered everyone on the ground. Inside were store employees at the time. None were injured. Johnny Emmerman works a few doors down. It's surprising to me. It's the first time in two years on this block that I've known anything happening here. The NYPD says the trio robbed the store of designer luggage and other high-end merchandise and then took off, the value of which is believed to be in the tens of thousands of dollars. It seems like it's happening more and more every day in the mall where everybody's there. They go, they rob, and they run. You feel like you're safe because there's rich areas or rich people shopping in the area, but that doesn't mean it's necessarily safe, in my opinion. Cameras were also running outside of the store where the thieves can be seen taking the stolen goods to a vehicle that police say was waiting nearby. Authorities have highlighted each suspect in this video, which shows them with merchandise in hand as New Yorkers and tourists pass right by. Yeah, I mean, they are pretty brazen, and usually it just entails just what you said, a kind of mobile shoplifting and just you're in and you're out. But um, when they're brandishing weapons, that takes it to a whole other level, I guess. To that end, just last week, Governor Hochul announced a $45 million retail theft prevention initiative that includes funds for New York businesses to stave off robberies and shoplifting, which officials say has skyrocketed since the pandemic. The NYPD also released these very clear images of the trio that they are now looking for. Police say the suspects left the store heading westbound on 14th Street, likely in the direction of the Lincoln Tunnel. Anyone with information is asked to call Crime Stoppers. That number, 1-800-577-TIPS. Over in Long Island City, a Brazilian tourist was stabbed in the neck in an unprovoked attack at Queens Plaza Station. Soon after, a man was struck in the head several times with a metal pipe. Of the six people that were shot, there's four males and two females. From shootings to slashings to assaults, so far this year, subway crimes have jumped 22.6 percent compared with last year. Even police officers haven't been exempt from attacks. We asked riders at the Queens Plaza station how they feel. In just the past week at their station, a Brazilian tourist was stabbed in the neck in an unprovoked attack, followed by a man getting hit in the head several times with a metal pipe. Is there anything in particular that you look out for, anything you do to stay safe? I mean, you know, just, you know, make sure you know your surroundings and uh, you be, should be okay. Do you do that sometimes or all the time? Every day. Because some of them be up there acting crazy. Then the young kids be smoking. Keep your mind about yourself as you would on any public transport network anywhere in the world. The NYPD tells Fox 5, 138 out of 266 cases so far this year are grand larcenies. That's up about 40 percent. It includes smartphones and headphones being snatched. And more. It could be a chain snatch, a purse snatch, a pickpocket. Uh, we used to call them lush workers, where people, you know, they go out partying all night, they've had too much to drink, and they fall asleep on the train. And then these guys go up to them and they, they cut their pockets out with a razor blade and remove their wallets. And here's an eye opening stat. Since the beginning of the year, NYPD officers have made 40% more arrests than this time last year, with a 64% increase in grand larceny arrests. Now, usually when arrests go up in the subway system, crime goes down. But in this case, they're both going up at the same time. And law enforcement experts tell us that's because grand larceny suspects are often back out on the streets before long. There's no fear of the police and there's no fear of deterrence. And there's no fear of going to Rikers or the criminal justice system. It's becoming a free for all. In the meantime, the NYPD says upwards of 1,000 additional officers continue to be added to subway patrols each day to make the simple act of a New Yorker's commute a safe one. And finally, we end in Manhattan, where an NYPD officer was struck in the head with an object during an unlawful protest march from 39th Street to Columbus Circle. This morning, an NYPD officer is recovering after he was struck with an object during an unlawful protest on Saturday. Photos released by the department show the gash on the officer's head. It required two staples. He's expected to be okay. But that's just one attack and a slew of increased attacks recently. Briella Tomasetti is at one police plaza with a breakdown. What's going on?
Yeah, Rosanna and Kurt, I guess the one positive thing to take from this again is that the officer is expected to recover, but the photos are just shocking with the gash and the staple in his head. Now, law enforcement sources say that there are a few things uh, that you can attribute to this rise in violence against police, protests, bail reform, and of course what we've been talking about so often, the influx of migrants and migrant-related crime. According to the NYPD's use of force data, 5,363 cops were injured last year with 1,286 officers hurt in battles with suspects between October and December, those three months alone. The statistics also also show that 135 officers were injured in the Bronx's 40th precinct, followed by 129 injuries in Brooklyn's 75th precinct. We want to make it clear, New York City police officers are not going to be punching bags. Patrick Hendry, head of the police union right there. You heard him delivering those remarks outside the courtroom where five suspects were arraigned in connection with last month's attack on two officers in Times Square. Manhattan DA Bragg, uh, Alvin Bragg, faced intense backlash for initially letting most of these suspects walk without bail. Uh, DA Bragg's office has secured indictments for seven of the suspects in connection with that Times Square attack. And his office is again still looking for three more people. He says that their names are unknown at this point. That's this week's Crime in the City. Subscribe for more at youtube.com slash Fox 5 NY.